So we're in Barcelona at Mobile World Congress 2023. I'm delighted to be joined by Abdu Mudazir, who is Group CTO at Deutsche Telekom. Abdu, thanks very much for joining us again this year. Always a pleasure to see you. Thank you so much, Ray, for inviting me. It's always a pleasure to talk to you as well. It's almost a year since you took over as Group CTO at Deutsche Telekom. And in that time, what's the single biggest thing that you've learned about how communications networks need to evolve? What's the biggest takeaway from the first 12 months or so? I think my takeaway has been very similar to what I expected, to be honest. What makes a network work are the people. And we have a fantastic set of engineers uh, who are driving the ecosystem. And that's the second thing that you know, what makes the communication technology work is the ecosystem that we are driving jointly together to standard, to different kind of joint innovation. And I've seen in my role as a group CTO in the last years, the importance of those components, having top minds that are thinking long, but at the same time making sure there is a significant amount of ecosystem behind the ideas that we are driving and that has been the key learning for me. And uh, as well as having this major role at one of the biggest telcos in the world, You've also taken on the job of uh, as Managing Director of Technology at Telekom Deutschland, uh, DT's domestic uh, operation. What's the strategic thinking behind that move? Yeah. Because that sounds like a lot to be taking on on top of what you already had. Indeed, it is, it's uh, quite a lot to take on. Maybe the first uh, uh, strategic thinking behind is, uh, I don't like getting bored, so it's not enough to do uh, only one or two things. Um, in a, a more senior, a serious note though, um, I think um, one of the biggest challenge we face as Deutsche Telekom, uh, maybe it's not too dissimilar to other group structured organization, is that there are sometimes um, a detachment between what the long-term strategy, the horizon two and three thinkers, thought leaders are thinking versus the operational realities of today, day to day. And exactly to bridge that gap, I think we've worked over the years in many ways, but this last move is exactly to allow me to not only preach what the future needs to be, but also get, you know, get my hands dirty in getting it implemented in the biggest network in Europe. Okay. Uh, and there's a lot going on in Germany, isn't there? I mean... Absolutely. It's actually, in my mind, the once in a lifetime opportunity um, if I look at uh, the copper network that we've had since years, we are currently transitioning to fiber. We are rolling out huge amount of fiber. We already have 5.4 million homes passed. But this year alone, in one year, that was in three years that we have achieved. In one year, my plan is to pass 3 million homes in one year. An extra and that's 3 exactly, million. Wow. Exactly, an extra 3 million. And that's exactly ambitious target that we have. It's important to continue to invest both in the fixed, but as well as mobile infrastructure. We will also be driving one of the biggest network modernization in our history in the next uh, two, three years. So yes, great time. So, I mean, obviously Deutsche Telekom is doing uh, a lot of advances, doing a lot of work in lots of different parts of its network, but in the radio access network, there's um, been talked for a while about the potential of Open RAN. Uh, do you think Open RAN is living up to expectations and are you still optimistic about its potential? Oh, yes. I'm absolutely optimistic about it. I know there has been some uh, rumors and talks that Deutsche Telekom is not as committed. We are absolutely committed and I'm, I'm personally very much committed into the Open RAN path that we've set ourselves, we were leading. And I'm glad that uh, uh, Alex Joy in my organization is leading the ORAN Alliance, and we continue to drive the ecosystem. But most importantly, I think we would have loved to see ORAN coming up, Open RAN coming up much faster than it has, especially to be able to deploy in massive scale. And I think that sets us apart. We want to deploy in a multi-vendor setup and a massive scale. And that's why I'm glad that we have announced right now, together with Nokia, Fujitsu, and Mavinir, in our Europe footprint, we will start a commercial deployment already this year. And so I think it has taken us a while, but I am very optimistic 
that the next couple of years will be the beginning of the biggest expansion towards open run era. Okay, well, that's a very, very clear message for the market there, Abdu. Um, now, when we chatted last year, you noted uh, that for network disaggregation to become a reality, radical automation is required. How are DT's automation plans progressing and what more do you need from the industry to help with this process? And I, it's still extremely important to re-emphasize that point. Disaggregation will bring complexity with itself. The only way we can make disaggregation a real viable deployment option is by having radical automation. Even without disaggregation, our nets are too complex today to manage and we need automation, real radical automation. One of the first initiatives we set out to radically automate was our fixed IMS. And Ray, the last time I was talking to you, I was saying we have started and we will start to migrate customers. And we were in the process. A year later, 13 million customers completely migrated in our German network, in the fixed IMS, in a fully radically automated deployment. That is the progress we are making. By the end of this year, I will have 16 million customers in Germany migrated to this system. And we continue to do this, not just in the core, the same in our operation. More than 70% of our incident first line response are then automated today. I don't have that many night shifts left. Actually, I don't have night shifts left. And that's exactly because this is the human aspect. It's just not right to have people working on Christmas night and not spending time with their family. And that's something we want to change. We want to be able to have no night shifts. We want to be able to really radically automate and deploy features for our customers in one or two days, not in months and years that our industry is used to. Right. Uh, so interesting that we're, you know, even just in the early months of 2023, we're hearing about these much shorter time scales, And it really shows that these things are moving on. It's not just talk. These things are actually happening in the industry now. And that absolutely. must be pretty exciting for you to be and a part absolutely. of it. Absolutely, Ray. I think I, I told you last time, this was the best time to be a CTO in my mind. It was the best time because it is the time where we could really, really shift the industry to this extreme agile, fast paced, responding to customer, not really slow moving that we're used to. And I love where we are right now. And I think we have a huge opportunity to move forward as well. Excellent. Now, you know, Deutsche Telekom is not alone uh, with, with those plans and those thoughts and that kind of strategy. Uh, and some of the uh, telcos that are, are looking at this are, are talking about changing the way they operate and evolving from a telco model to a tech co model. Is that something that Deutsche Telekom is doing? Is that a journey that all telcos need to embark upon? Uh, I think the journey of having technology in the center to serve humanity, which means moving away from this big teleco kind of mindset where, I don't know, services were at the center, is something we are embarking on. And you know our strategy on being the leading digital teleco and translated into teleco as a platform is exactly that journey that we started and embarked on. And this was, by the way, a really conscious decision in our strategy. The five years before, our strategy was to be the leading European integrated player. We executed on that. That brought us all the success that we've seen. Now, we said we're going to the leading digital teleco. To be a leading digital teleco, you need to move to being a tech company. And that's what we are doing. And what that means in concrete terms is also taking up some of the responsibilities of developing technology yourself, but also not relying purely on in-house uh, expertise, but working with partners in hyper collaboration, which I mentioned last time as well. Okay, excellent. Um, now, one of the other big themes again here at Mobile World Congress this year um, is how the whole industry can help to reduce the carbon footprint of telecom and uh, you know, reduce uh, power consumption, which is important in lots of different ways yes. for financial reasons as well. As CTO, how are you able to increase the energy efficiency of the Deutsche Telekom networks? And what do you need from the ecosystem to reduce the power consumption while handling the increasing volumes of data that are running over your networks? I think for me, um, we have, as a telecommunication, but also a technology community in general, 
a very, very important responsibility in driving towards a sustainable ecosystem, sustainable planet. And I think that starts, in my mind, in three areas. One is the energy consumption, which is very important, regardless of the capacity increase, maintaining that or even decreasing the energy consumption. A second is the network circularity, the shelf life of our network and what happens to them after, including the devices. Yeah? Yeah. And, and the third is this entire scope three uh, elements, including packaging. I think we have been busy in all three areas. And when it comes to the energy consumption, we've made progress. We're not there yet. And we've made good progress in the radio access network area where we are not beaming one gigabit per second 24 seven, but able to switch off layers when they are not used. And I think at the same time, in the network circularity, that, that needs to come now from all uh, elements. Yeah? Yeah. That's what yeah. we talked about. And then on the network circularity, I think that's where we are at the beginning, in my, uh, to be honest. Just too early for all of us in the industry. Happy to learn from others who've done more on that. We're just at the beginning. Of that. On this entire packaging, I was so amazed when my team showed me what a small router or any kind of network gear that we have, how much plastic that it contains in our packaging system. And this innovation that we've done with our suppliers together to really minimize the amount of plastic to actually remove, but still have a safe packaging, helps also address the planet. So in short, energy efficiency is one element, but not the complete story. And that element, we need to work together with the, um, our suppliers to really make sure that I have a visibility what box is consuming what amount of energy at this time and to be able to optimize the energy consumption. Okay. So uh, lots of great thoughts there and I'm sure that I'm sure there's many others in the industry doing the same but it's great to hear it from you know somebody like yourself who's in a position to say this is what we're doing and this is how we're going to do it and also learn from others. So uh, great stuff. So Abdu, thanks very much for your time. Great to talk to you again and you know I'm sure we'll talk in between, but look forward to catching up at Mobile World Congress 2024. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you Ray.